The Avengers vs. The Peter Factor by Midnight Wolf 2192 Chapter 16, Doctor Strange and Wong Welcome, Stephen. And Pepper Potts greeted the Sorcerer Supreme as he portaled into Stark Tower. He had been called by the Avengers to assist them in a group of rogue sorcerers who had previously been expelled from the Sanctum. Thank you for coming on such short notice. This is a problem requiring the utmost speed. No thanks required, Stephen replied. And... Pepper nod nodded with a smile. Where is the tech head? He should be down in his lab. Friday can direct you, Pepper explained, and Stephen nodded. The man stepped into the elevator and Friday took him straight to the lab. When he arrived, however, it was not Stark he saw. A teenager was sitting on one of the workbenches, Stark's two robots hovering around him and a boy appeared to be attempting to bat them away. The door to the lab opened, but the boy didn't register Stephen's presence. Go away, dummy. I have work to do. The boy's voice was soft and it sounded pained. The bot to the boy's left chirped almost unhappily as it tried to grab the screwdriver from his hand. Dummy, we can play later. The boy continued to work while the bots harassed him. Eventually, dummy managed to take the screwdriver away from the boy and the team let out a whimper of protest. He made to chase after the bot when the boy's eyes rolled back in his head and he fell towards the ground. He would have struck hard if it had not been for Stephen's cloak flying off the sorcerer's soldiers and wrapping tightly around the boy. Put him on the couch, Stephen ordered softly. The cloak moved swiftly over to the piece of furniture. Before Stephen could see anything else, the lab doors opened and a flustered Tony Stark walked in. Sorry, Dumbledore. I meant to be here to meet you, but it seems my intern has gone miss... Tony's voice trailed off as he took in the scene in front of him. Well, he was missing. Boss, Mr. Parker appeared here not long after you got the call from Dr. Cho. Friday informed Tony, who rolled his eyes fondly. The bots have been trying to stop Peter from working. Dummy managed to get the screwdriver from him, but Peter passed out before he could retrieve it. Vitals, Tony said softly as he approached the couch. His fever has reduced slightly. It's currently sitting at around 103 degrees Fahrenheit, Friday explained. Peter's healing factor is starting to kick in, so he feels to be getting better. Right now he needs rest and fluids. Should I have Dr. Cho come down with an IV bag? Yes, let's do that. I'll keep him here so I can make sure he stays still. Tony said before turning to Stephen, Is your friend going to let him go? Stephen looked at the cloak and the garment waved a section of it in a way that Stephen took as a negative. Stephen looked back at Tony and shook his head, causing the other man to roll his eyes once again. Loyal piece of outerwear you've got there, Tony said and Stephen shrugged. The billionaire waved his hand for Stephen to follow him and they sat down on their desk in the corner of the lab, Tony keeping one eye on, on the sleeping teenager. Dr Cho arrived and nodded at Tony before approaching Peter, the IV bag and stand in hand. The cloak parted slightly so that Cho could get at the boy's arm before wrapping around him once more as the doctor was finished. I'll come back and check on him in a few hours, Cho whispered and Tony nodded. Once the doctor had left, the two men turned to one another. So, what have you got for me? Tony asked as he tapped on a Stark pad. For the next few hours, Stephen and Tony discussed their various information, all while keeping an eye on the sleeping teenager. The cloak of levitation never unwrapped from the boy, even going so far as to pat his hair when Peter would moan in his sleep. Okay, Stark, he can head to his own bed now. Dr. Cho had returned and was removing the IV from Peter's arm. He's taken in all these fluids and his fever has dropped again. Bring him back to the med bay if his fever rises, but I think he's out of the woods now. Thanks, Doc, Tony replied. Dr. Cho nodded before leaving the lab. Tony and Stephen approached the sleeping teen and Stephen noticed a smile on Tony's face. I suppose I, I should get him up to bed. The cloak raised itself and Peter from the couch and Tony made an aborted move to catch the teen. The cloak started floating towards the elevator and Stephen rolled his eyes. I guess we're joining you, Stephen said and Tony nodded with a smirk. The two men joined the cloak in the elevator and Tony instructed Friday to take them up to Tony's floor. When they arrived, Tony led the group down to Peter's room. He pulled back the blankets in the bed and turned to the cloak. The garment looked hesitant to let the boy go, so Stephen cleared his throat. Put him in the bed now. We have to return to the sanctum. 
The cloak reluctantly unravelled itself from Peter, and even went as far as to tuck the teen into bed. The cloak was patting Peter's hair gently when Stephen cleared his throat once more. The cloak floated back to its position on Stephen's shoulders, and Stephen rolled his eyes. I will return with more information soon. Hopefully we will have the sorcerer's location soon, Stephen said before beginning to spin his hand. The portal opened and Stephen walked through, shooting one final look at the teen and Tony. Once the portal had closed, Stephen looked at the cloak and sighed. Have you become attached to Stark's intern? Seriously. The next time Stephen met Peter, it was during the battle against the rogue sorcerers. The sorcerers had decided that attacking Stark Tower was their best course of action. Stephen and Wong had arrived to aid the Avengers and had walked straight into the battle zone. Stephen made his way towards Tony, who was battling one of the sorcerers. Nice of you to join us! Tony yelled as he fired the repulsors at the sorcerer. Stephen conjured some ropes and quickly and efficiently bound the woman. He knocked her out and turned to Tony. Tony, however, was looking over his shoulder, his face plaint raised and a look of horror on his face. The kids! Stephen turned and noticed the leader of the group disappearing into the fire escape. Fredo wasn't working as the intense from magical discharges had shorted out her systems, so there was no way to warn the kids or lock down their area to protect them. Stephen turned to Tony and rested his hand on the other man's head. Getting a glimpse of the room the kids were hiding in, Stephen nodded and apologetically before opening a portal. When he stepped through, he noticed that there was a group of kids huddling in a corner of the room. Stark's intern was standing protectively in front of the group and stood up straight at his arrival. Are you all okay? Stephen asked the group. Look out! The teen intern. Peter nodded, yelled and Stephen turned too, slightly too late to avoid a blast fired at him by the sorcerer. He hit the wall hard and groaned in pain. The sorcerer approached the group of kids slowly and Stephen struggled to his knees. I am sorry you children have to see this. The sorcerer was speaking to the kids now, but Peter was almost snarling at the man as he stepped closer. Feisty little child, aren't you? Try me, Peter said, and the sorcerer laughed. Before the sorcerer could do anything, Stephen climbed to his feet and fired a spell off at the man. Peter crowded the kids further back into the corner, ensuring that his body was still in front of them like a shield. The two sorcerers exchanged spells back and forth with extreme aggression. A soft cry from Stephen's right distracted him slightly as Peter received a glancing blow from an errant spell. This distraction was enough to cause for the other sorcerer to gain the upper hand. He shot a spell at Stephen, and was it, which was enough to knock the Sorcerer Supreme onto his back. His cloak attempted to charge at the other sorcerer, but he quickly restrained the garment with the spell. So this is how the Supreme Sorcerer falls, the man hissed as he approached Stephen, distracted by some useless brats. You should be ashamed. The Ancient One should never have chosen you as her successor. Before the man could fire what was probably a killing spell, his hands were bound together and his eyes were covered in with white web. Stephen looked up and noticed that Peter was firing webs from two devices on his wrists. With the last of his energy, Stephen managed to bind the other sorcerer's powers. The last thing he saw before passing out was Peter firing off final webs before dropping to his knees beside him. When Stephen awoke, it was to the sounds and smells he associated with the Sanctum Santorum. He let out a groan as Hela Ashrag appeared beside him. Hello, Stephen, the man said with a smile. Welcome back. What happened? How did I get here? Stephen asked as he struggled to sit up. Ashrag helped him sit up and handed him a small cup of water. You're battling the rogues at Stark Tower, Ashrag explained. From what we have gathered, he suffered from some magical exhaustion. I'd say your fight with the lead rogue was quite taxing. That answers one question. What about the second? Stephen asked. Before Ashrak could answer, the, the door opened and Wong walked in. The spider child carried you here. He wouldn't relinquish you even when Stark tried to force him. Wong said, and if Stephen didn't know better, he'd say his friend sounded almost fond. You've been unconscious for a week. In that time, Peter has barely left your side. He certainly hasn't left the sanctum. What? Stephen asked, and Wong smirked softly put up quite the fight when Stark tried to force him to leave. Wong said with a laugh, wedged himself into a far corner here and refused to come down. Even the fired webs at Stark when the man got a suit to try and help him. Eventually Stark relented and left the kid here. Now that you're awake, he's your problem. You like him, Stark Stephen commented and Wong sniffed. 
You do. You've come to like the child. He amuses me. Breaks up the monotony. Wong said dismissively. And Siva knew his friend, though. Wong was actually fond of the child. Fond in a way he wasn't with anyone else. Glad you're awake. The students have been worried. Just the students? Stephen teased and Wong waved his hand at Stephen. Thanks, Beyonce. Now, where is our visitor? Stephen followed Wong out of the infirmary at the sanctum and towards the main building. Wong led Stephen to the, into the library and Stephen raised an eyebrow. Wong disliked people in his space for longer than necessary. Peter must have won the other man over if he was being left alone in Wong's private sanctuary. The two men walked towards one of the back rooms and Stephen heard giggling. As they walked in, Stephen didn't even try to stop the grin from crossing his features. Peter was sitting upside down on the ceiling, playing catch, catch of all things, with the cloak of levitation. The boy would toss what looked to be a tennis ball somewhere and the cloak would chase after it eagerly. Each time the ball was returned, the boy would let out a soft giggle before the process repeated. The door closing had Peter looking over at them and the cloak rushed over upon noticing its master. Doctor Strange! Peter cried excitedly before dropping to the ground. He scrambled over to the Sorcerer Supreme and looked at him with an eager smile. Mr Wong said you'd be okay, but she looked really bad. I mean, you looked hurt. That's what I meant. Before Peter could launch into a full-on ramble, Stephen rested a shaky hand on the boy's shoulder. Peter took a deep breath and smiled up at the man. Thank you, Peter, Stephen said. And he watched as the boy let out a deep breath. I hope you have enjoyed your time here at the Sanctum. Totally. Peter was nodding enthusiastically as he spoke. People have been so nice. I mean, I've probably been annoying as anything. I've asked a lot of questions. But yeah, people have been great. Questions are good, Stephen said wisely as he looked down at the team. After all, magic is just a science that we don't understand yet. Arthur C. Clarke, right? Peter asked and Stephen nodded. Yeah, that's what I think too. It's so cool to watch your students, what they can do. And Cloakey has been introducing me to the artifacts and other stuff. Cloakey? Stephen asked, but the cloak of levitation ignored him, choosing to settle on Peter's shoulders and stroke his hair. The boy laughed and Stephen just rolled his eyes. So tell me, how much longer are you here for? Well, Mr Stark ordered me to call him when you woke up. But I'm having fun. Peter was pouting by the end of the statement and Stephen was not internally cooing. He most certainly wasn't. I guess I should call him though. Or we could show you a few more spells and whatnot. Why waste such an interesting opportunity? Stephen said slyly and Peter nodded it vigorously. Wong just rolled his eyes and shooed them out of his library. Two days later, Tony finally came by to check on the spider child and was stunned by finding him sitting with Wong and Stephen. The two men were throwing what looked to be like balls of light and either the cloak of levitation or Peter's webs were retrieving them. So this is what I get for worrying? Tony teased, making his presence known. Peter scrambled over to his mentor, chattering away excitedly. Tony looked over at Stephen, who nodded firmly at him, and Tony nodded in return. Okay, kid, time to return to the tower. I've got a mama spider back there who is demanding the return of her dance partner. Peter walked over to Wong and Stephen, and Tony watched as the boy threw his arms around the men one at a time. Wong ruffled his hair before pushing him away gently, and Stephen surprisingly wrapped an arm around the boy's shoulders. As Peter approached the cloak of levitation, Stephen walked over to Tony. Feel free to bring him back any time, Stephen commented, attempting not to lance. We don't necessarily want the rest of you troublemakers, but Peter can visit whenever he likes. Whatever, Dumbledore, Tony said with a knowing smile. Come on, kid, happy's outside and you know how antsy he gets. Peter trailed after Tony, waving to the sorcerers as he went. The sanctum became quieter once the boy had left, and the two men wasn't so sure that was a good thing. When they arrived at the tower, Peter made his way up to the gym for his dancing last session with Nat. Tony entered his lab and opened up his spreadsheet. Another two formidable parties, well, two and a half if you included the cloak of levitation, had fallen to the Peter Factor. Tony entered the information with a smirk and a laugh. The Peter Factor 19, the Avengers and Co, zero.